here's what came up in a search engine result. You had a page on its own with no branding, no, lo no logo, or brand, no branding, or way to navigate the website. So this basically looked like a broken website when it came up in the search engine. So of course, with that, there was more change that, that took place. What was the next thing that came into effect? Uh, a lot of requests I got were for creating a splash or landing page. Now, why, why were these pages popular? Uh, what these pages are, they were ways to get into the, a website. So for instance, high, there was options that needed to be selected at the very beginning of the, uh, the, uh, the home page. High bandwidth, low bandwidth, English, Espanol, Flash, non-flash were kind of options that you would see at the beginning of a, a landing or a splash page. Over time, splash pages were used as a way to just introduce the practice branding and a selection was just enter site. And that was a big request that we got because it just looked clean and it was a way to just introduce the logo, which was really a, high, a big graphic in the branding of the practice. And the enter site just looked really nice, but it didn't serve really much of a purpose other than looking very pretty. Um, as you can imagine, having only graphics on your home page is not good for search engine optimization. It also created an additional click to get into the website, which is another negative. Let's take a look at how that page looks. So here's an example site and a click to enter. Uh, no content, no links, and pretty much double clicking to get anywhere into the website, to get further into the site. Next area is flash animated intro, flash site, or flash banners. Uh, this, is a, this is highly requested. It looked great. Um, flash anywhere on your site had a great impact. It, create, it created movement on your website or a cool introduction to your practice and a way to tell a story without the user interacting with the site. Here's an example of a flash intro. Let me take you to an actual live version of that. Okay, so here's a flash introduction that we used to do a lot of. Uh, this is, again, uh, this is kind of the double uh, negative. You have an enter site and you have a, um, a flash uh, homepage. But it looked great. I mean, it, it, that was really the, the main purpose, and everyone was about how this site looked at the time. So this was another one that was pretty much, you know, a need, uh, a need for change. So moving on to the next section. We try to do a combination. We said, let's focus on getting that flash into a site that had content links, a way that you can, you can market and you can have a nice looking website. Uh, so that became the next, uh, next design trend that was out there. And um, I'll use Dr. Epstein here as an example. And I can actually pull up his live site. And as you can see on this, we have animation, content here, procedure links, all ways to find you, and easy to, nav easy to navigate, but it still had flash animation and the organization, obviously, we're going to get into a little bit about why something like this can still require some change. So these are pretty much you know, the different design trends that, were, that we went through in the last 12 to 15 years. Now, Let's move into why this these changes took place. What drove these changes? Um, well, some of them were just design trends. People just, you know, uh, they got bored of a style and a new style evolved. Uh, but change in technology was a really large one. Uh, new devices such as the iPad, the iPhone touch screens, uh, larger displays, video cards that outputted higher resolutions. Uh, these are all things that, that that, that created the change in website development. Uh, the patient usage, how people use your website, learning how people use your website, and seeing what worked, seeing what didn't work, was another piece of information we needed to really find out what the best way at the time was to develop the site. And that's why we figured out what was wrong and we made those changes. And you know, it was great for the time, some of these sites I pulled up, but going forward now, we actually had a huge change, which is all in the technology, and we are uh, going to be talking about that right now. We're going to talk about why and reasons to redesign what you currently have or 
um, what's changed so much in the past couple of years that really require a change in your website. Here are some of the bullet points that I put together I feel are extremely important. And let's just go into the first one. Uh, properly displayed on high resolutions and tablets. Okay, so let's just go back to, uh, let's see, this is a technology one. The technology for high definition TVs and flat screens inspired the changes in screens we use for our computers today. I used to have a 27 inch TV in my living room as my main TV, and now I'm looking at 27 inch navigating the web. I never thought that I would have a 27 inch TV on my desk right now, but that's, that's, that's where time has gone and that's where technology has taken us. Now, not, every, not everybody has a 27 inch TV, a screen, but larger screens with video cards that output a higher resolution definitely does exist and is very popular. Now, you may ask why I group tablets and high resolution displays together. This is really a two part answer. One, this section is all about how the website is displayed, whether it's a small screen or a large screen. And two, designing for a higher resolution creates a more tablet friendly website. What happens is we design everything on a website larger to take up more space on a high resolution. This includes fonts, buttons, text, and images at a higher resolution. The tablet will automatically size down the website and with updated code and a larger graphics, we can create an exact fit for a tablet screen. So you can see how designing larger and shrinking down with the proper code can get that site right into a tablet screen looking great. Um, so it also works not just for touch screens, just to mention also there's computers now that have touch screens. So you want to make sure that when you're navigating something on a touch screen, it, it's larger and easy to, to click on or, or to touch with your finger. Uh, let's have a look at the exa an example, uh, basically a before and, a before and after example. I'm going to show you a site that we redesigned and that is displayed in all uh, tablet, tablet orientations and uh, basically a, a, a high resolution display. So this is a screenshot of a high resolution display with a lower resolution website. Now, you'll notice a lot of space again on the left, right. We managed to center the website, you know, uh, but as far as uh, the quality of graphics, you can just see the quality is just not, it's not as clear as you see on newer websites. Let's look at this website now. <clears throat> Here's the website and what we did to it, and you can see it's a huge difference. Uh, besides the design, there's a user interface difference and just the quality of graphics just is larger, takes up more of the screen. Um, and basically it's just easier to navigate because you have the main focus that you're trying to emphasize right there. Um, let's look at this on other devices. Here's the before on landscape on a tablet. Here's after. Now take a, take a look at how the, the, this website takes up the entire screen on a tablet. As far as the width goes, it's flush. Now keep in mind, this is, where I, this is a, the part where I feel Everyone thinks that they, they, they look at a website through a landscape, but when you're reading an article or you're reading something on the web on a tablet, you're going to be turning that into the portrait mode. That's the area, that's, that's where you're going to be scrolling and reading text. Just like a Kindle Fire or a book uh, reader, that's how you'll hold it. And look how much more. Now, first of all, it's very small than before. You see a lot more of the screen, yes, but the redesign looks much better. It's larger. You can actually read the text. And the buttons obviously are touchscreen friendly, so it's very easy to navigate this site. So as you can see, designing for a display, whether it be a small screen, a large screen, uh, designing for this updated technology is necessary to have your site display correctly in these devices and on a higher resolution uh, this, um, uh, output uh, video cards and displays. Okay, so let's... Let's see, create a more user-friendly website to increase conversion. This falls into new design trends and data, knowing what works. How a viewer scans the page and creating a user interface that is easily to use with plenty of options, all to help convert potential patients into patients. Usually this is all grouped into the design of your website. 
but you can have a great design and a poor user interface, or vice versa. A great user interface, a poor design. I, felt, I feel like you need both for a great user experience. Let's have a look at some of these user comp interface components. I'll take Dr. Hackney as an example, and I will pull up the live site and I'll pull up this screenshot going through this. Uh, this is a screenshot, and I'm going to add some um, highlights to the areas that we're going to discuss. Let's, uh, let's go to the first one here. Make sure there's an easy way to contact the office. It can be request an appointment, patient portal, get direction or get directions, but having a link or action at the top of your website grouped with other contact information such as social media icon, the address and phone number, uh, needs to be a prominent at the very top. So you have some direction of what they need to do to reach out to you. Simple navigation. I'm oh, sorry. Uh, let's go through the selector here. You want to give your, your, your users control of the animation. Giving control of the animation allows them to pause the, the animation when they roll over it or go forward or back. And if I take you to the live site here, you'll see we have an animation playing right now. So that's the animation. And he focused this all on patient stories. So that's the main focus. But you can focus it on anything about the office, about the procedures that you, that you treat, um, some facts about some of the conditions, things that, like that that you want to emphasize can be done through this animation. And having control over it is one of the user interface components that you, we would like to have. So it's not just I missed it or I have to wait for it to cycle again. It's now I can go back to the second one and read that. And if I put my mouse over it, I can pause and have control over this. Another section within that animation is create a next step in your animation. Somebody is reading something about the practice or they're seeing a, uh, a, a slogan or something that's credible, a credible uh, a notation about the practice. I would like to have a, a link that goes further into the site regarding that. So having a, a button that will take you into the page and then from there have other options to convert into reaching out to the practice is what we want in this in a, in a animation. So create a next step is a big part of that. If you look on the right here, adding a photo gallery, a video, office tour, or exciting graphic to emphasize some of the features the site offers. So instead of digging through the site for things that you have that, that's an interactive component, whether it be a virtual tour, a photo gallery, uh, you can have it kind of highlighted or and, and brought right to the front of the site. Great way to introduce a video of the practice or a special or something like that. Uh, which takes me down to this section here. Most of these are all different highlights of, and, and different highlights of the practice offers. Um, you have a photo gallery, the video. But what I really want to pay attention to is how we group the content on the page. Very important that we group content because if you, if you look at some sites and you have scattered thoughts, there's there's, uh, there's information all over the site where you have awards at the top and then maybe some, some society, logo, society logos at the bottom. And these awards can be all over the place and you don't really know what you're looking at. It just, uh, it, 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 it's important that we get these, these logos and these awards or anything that, that, that grouped it as under one header together. So if you look at the left, the, the live site, awards and media will basically cycle and you're able to now also have a link that takes you to the full section for awards and media, which is updated. And you can go further into it from, I believe this is just a list of the uh, awards and media. But the whole idea is that you, we need to have grouped focus on the page. Another section here is to keep the site current. The, this area of the site right here is for uh, coupons uh, or a message, something to keep the site uh, constantly updated. Uh, there's different things you can do, like events and seminars. You can have come into the home page. You can have your recent blog posts and articles come up into the home page. Uh, these are all ideas to keep the site current, to keep it look looking fresh and dynamic. And uh, that's something that uh, is nice to have so your current patients can come back and keep, get updated. And also, people that are looking at the site see it as something that is not, not old information and it's something that has been around 
and something that's been updated and they're familiar with it. Um, so that's something that is also a good option to put on that home page or on the user interface. Um, as far as the navigation goes, uh, simplifying the navigation so you can have less options at the top. Instead of having a left navigation that has a lot of options, we have a few options at the top. And those are the top level buttons. And inside of those buttons, it breaks down to other menu options. Now, the idea is to make it very simple to know if it's procedures, office information, or uh, uh, information about the doctor that they're looking for. Uh, so like rolling over and getting those drop downs are the easiest way to, to categorize these. Now, that's one way of getting to the procedures. Other, there's other ways further down the page, which brings me to the scrolling on the page. A lot of times people are scared of scrolling because they feel like they're, 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 whatever they put below the fold is, is lost. So what you want to do is keep what's most important to your practice above the fold, but don't feel like everything below is not being viewed. If the site is grouped with headers, they will see that there's more. As you can see here, Let's also not forget that users on a tablet will most likely scroll as soon as the site loads. Because if it's a touch, the touch screen, all you can really do once the site loads is move your hand up and down. You're going to start scrolling right away. And as long as you see a header that defines a section of your website, you will continue to scroll down to see more of that information. But whatever is important, let's keep it to the top. But as you can see, this user interface has a lot of these components and they're grouped nicely. So I, it's a good example, but um, obviously everyone has their different um, highlights that they want to put on their on their site. So this will change depending on on your practice. To summarize. Uh, let me actually just show an example of this, what happens on a tablet. Uh, if you notice, you can you can actually see the meet Dr. Uh, meet um, Dr. Hackney section uh, when you're on the tablet. So. Going back, you'll see on the desktop, you see the actual header, but once you get to the actual um, tablet portrait view, you can see the entire thing. So you can design further down. Um, it's very important to have the right user interface and some direction. In summary, that's what we want. We want to give more direction and options on all pages to create a more accurate and better user experience. So that pretty much you know, sums up the user part of, of, the, uh, of the redesign. Technology one, update animation. Update animation so your website is compatible with the latest technology. Flash used to be one of the primary ways to get an animated home page. The benefits of having an animation not only makes the website come alive, but it also creates a way to convey multiple messages to your viewers. Ever since Apple introduced the mobile operating system, iOS, for the iPad and iPhone, Flash has become a less used technology to create website animation. This is because Apple didn't, didn't allow a Flash plugin installed on iOS. Eventually, the Android operating system also did away with Flash being allowed. This leaves your Flash animation only visible on desktop browsers, which still need a third-party Flash Player plugin installed to work. If the Flash Player plugin is not installed or doesn't exist, then your animation will not work and your message is lost. If your website has a Flash animation in a large area, you are most likely turning off users using any tablet mobile phone or a browser with no plugin. So let's just take a look at exactly what I'm talking about with that. I want to just pull up an example site. I uh, have a live version here for us. Uh, okay, so here's an animation that is Flash. And just uh, to know you have Flash, if you right click and you see about Flash, then that's the plugin right there that you need to play this. Um, some desktops don't have it. Some browsers don't have it. And uh, pretty much all mobile devices do not have this available. So you, it will not load. But what does it look like? Let's hit the next screen here. OK, so on a tablet, you'll notice, please upgrade the latest version of Flash. This is not detecting Flash. It's giving you a general message. Uh, basically, uh, there's no way of downloading the Flash player to make this work. So that message, all those messages in there are now gone. They're lost. And yeah, the site does work, but it's not working to its fullest potential. So it's, a, it's something to definitely, uh, this is a, a big area to upgrade as, or on a redesign to update because that is a huge real estate of your website. A lot of messages are being conveyed there. There's even interaction in there 
with links going further into it, and it captures and engages your audience. You want to make sure that that is, uh, is, is working. What we do now, we use, a, we use jQuery, style sheets, and HTML5 tags, such as Canvas. That gives us a solution for our animation today. These are compatible on all mobile phones, tablets, and browsers. Uh, so by re redesigning your website with an animation feature, you will still have the latest web technology and assure that all users using all devices and browsers can see what was intended. So we can still get the animation in there, just like you saw on Dr. Hackney's site and all of the newer sites we're doing now. They still look great at moving up with movement on the site, just that now it works across all platforms. Okay, recode to keep up with web development, website development standards. This is one that's kind of in the background, but is another important one. Uh, just because you don't see it doesn't mean it's not being looked at. Code that is behind the scenes is continuously being crawled by search engine spiders and devices such as the iPad also look for HTML5 standard tags in the code. How does this affect your current website? Without these standard tags, devices and search engines may not find them and your website could be missing out. These tags can only be used in HTML5, which is the latest code being used. Let's use a Cisco to the search engine example first. These tags may also be part of a search engine algorithm in the near future and can result in a loss of ranking if not available on your website. As of now, using HTML5 code is better organized and is more search engine friendly. One example is the use of a standard tag address. I'm going to show you code, which basically is just HTML, but this is a standard tag that HTML5 and every develop, everyone developing in HTML5 knows the address is where the address goes. So there's more direction for Google to find and locate the main article, the address, the sidebar, all that is being uh, crawled and, and looked at. With the older HTML5 code that you may have in your current site, that's not there. Uh, just just a, one that you probably never would think of, but is actually being used. Let's move on to the device example. The iPad has a reader button that only appears when you have an HTML5 compatible website. The reader button is used to give a more legible presentation of your website content. People who are used to using this feature may hit the back button if it's not available. This is just one example of how a device can use these standard tags and how it can hurt your website not to have it. Let's have a look. Right, we have the icon at the very top that I'm circling here. They actually changed it. It used to actually say reader, but the new iOS 7, that icon is now what it is. Uh, when you hit that, this is what you get. Now, you're not going to have this if you don't have that standard tag, and the article standard tag is what's in H the HTML5 code that pulls this up. It tells it that this is an article, this is content. They can save this to read later, or they can just read it at a, in a more legible fashion now. Uh, but again, this is only one example of how that, that works. There's probably in the future a lot more that are going to be looking for these tags to use either for a device or for a search or in a search app engine algorithm. So we don't want to miss out on that. Okay, let's move on. Keeping your website current with a content management system. With a redesign, the website is coded with a content management system. And if you want, you or your staff can update your website through any web browser. The CMS is capable of adding new pages, locations, and gives you full control of your menu. Adding and updating your website on an ongoing basis will keep your website current. Now, let's look at the way that this, this, this CMS looks. It's, it's based on, on WordPress, but basically we add a bunch of features and a bunch of buttons here that allow you to add every aspect of your website, add every aspect of your website. You can add or remove locations. If you have a photo gallery option, you can, you can, you can do that all from this one screen. So, Having control and being able to update your website from an admin like this uh, keeps the website looking fresh and new and also gives you more control over your site. Because this is a, this CMS platform is database driven, it also allows to keep your website dynamic. Examples would be global content, which you'll see here. This means that I can take this piece of content and move it on different pages of the site and update it from one area. Uh, latest blog posts, which would pull in blogs to certain pages that, uh, let's say the, uh, you, you, you have a, 
a category that is on one procedure, one treatment. Uh, we can pull it on right to that treatment page. So it looks like it's related and it's new. It's a new article relating to, to that condition or treatment or service. Um, you can also pull in events and seminars. It's another way to keep your, your site up to date is if you have any of those events and seminars ongoing, you can have a section in the blog that will pull into any area of your site. And it, like I said, it's whatever we design, it's what we program to. So the style that we define in the beginning, we program so we can edit those areas for you uh, through your admin. So everyone may be a little different, but the, the same idea that, that you can actually change these, these areas of your website. Oops. Okay, adding a mobile site for a better mobile phone experience. Mobile is, uh, really it's all about mobile phones these days. Nearly every commercial or hype is about the latest mobile phone. And these phones are a gateway to information, a perfect way to get into your website. Approximately 35% of viewers are coming to your website through a mobile device. And having a website that is extremely intuitive on a mobile device such should be a high priority for your practice website. With the redesign, the website is coded to add a full version of your website in a mobile-friendly manner. Let's have a look at exactly what the differences are and do a side-by-side -side comparison. All right, let's use Skin Center as an example. Here's the desktop version of Skin Center website. Here is no mobile feature. Here is with a mobile feature. As you can see, you can't really read anything that's on the left. And on the right, you have buttons that the navigation has changed completely now to phone options. You have the call, which will call using your phone's uh, call feature. Uh, maps, which goes right into your navigation when you click on that so they can contact the office. Contact, which goes right to a, a, a mobile uh, version of your contact form and menu, which we will open up to show you how that reads. And obviously, you can even see this now on my screen, how clear it is. This is an accordion menu that opens up, and all your services, every one of your pages is accessible through this menu. And imagine trying to go on here with your finger and navigate your website. It would be very difficult. This is 35% uh, of viewers are a great number. You don't want to miss out on these viewers navigating your site or making it easy to call the office or get the site, get the uh, location into their navigation system. This is a direct way to do that. So we covered the mobile, we covered uh, most of the points here. Let's just go and sum this up here. Now, at the end, the last, the last bullet I, I wanted to go over is that I was featuring a client. I want to show one of our clients that started from the very beginning with us. Uh, I started in 1999. His name is Dr. Epstein. I pulled up his site before. Uh, before, I pulled it up with the combination of the flash, and, and, and it was still a great looking site. Um, but we are in the process of redesigning. And I do want to show you a couple of older versions of the site just to see how it progressed throughout the years. Um, let's go into first. OK. All right, so basically, in 1999, there was another design that we don't have a screenshot for. This one here is, was in about 2003. You can see it didn't have that much information and it wasn't really formatted uh, as, as nice as it could be. So let's move into the next version. And you can see it, the design changes with it, but this was another combination of some text, some animation on the top, some more highlights, but notice no organization. They're just scattered all over the place. Uh, something that you definitely want to keep symmetric and organized now. And now what he currently has, it's a little better. We increased the resolution. It's clearer, but you got flash animation playing. You have some scattered thoughts again on the page. Uh, let me take a, let's take a preview of what this site actually looks like right now, or, or in development right now. Here's the site that we designed for him now. You can see it's a lot clearer. The graphics are higher resolution. You can see everything closer up. Um, and, of course, when you scroll down, you would see more components. I can actually pull that, that one up on the back end, too, for you. All 
camera. So this gives you a good preview kind of, of exactly what. Now it's one image. It's just a design just to show you an example of what it looks like and as I scroll down. So you can see the metrics are lined up for the tablets. Each, ha each section has a focus. Very important to have a focus for each section. So everything you want to cover is in that one little area. Patients are saying. Now instead of the highlights being at the top, they're on the bottom here. Like I said, everyone's different. What's more important to your practice would be at the top. But it doesn't mean I'm missing this because I'm scrolling and it's right here. These headers explain exactly what I'm looking at. Uh, and as you can see, it continues on. And this is great, a great tablet uh, layout for a website and one of a newer designs that will be worked on. So in summary, your website is a reflection of your practice and having an accurate user interface that portrays the right image and displays correctly on all latest technology should be a high priority for your practice. Hopefully you've learned something through these insights today that will help you make a decision on your practice website.